seen what I've done on the long turn side, uh, or the short turn side, and how I pulled that in. Now this is one that I just finished. Matter of fact, let's let's get the two, the hook and the straight in a finished form. Okay, let's come on down there a little bit. Alright, and I'll pull the lamp some down a little bit. Sometimes that reflection really hurts my picture quality, but anyway, uh, these two are finished, as you can see. The, the other one would have a big hump. It was about to here. Mainly, it balanced them out a lot better. They were a lot different bowl to bowl. They're still not perfectly matched, although I could do that. There's just not enough time left. Um, you know, you get in here with a sonic checker and you carve here and there. That would be stage five territory. By the way, stage five is, is the big money. It's also the big gains. That's when the pickup points and all that all come into play. But really, this was as far as I could go. But th the point I'm making is this. All that work y'all seen me do to the top of the runners way up in here, the walls, moving it all over, it all come down to this last little point right here. Uh, if you don't go in there and reshape the bowl after the valve job and pull all that in, then you might as well have not done any of that. So at the end of the day, what we have to say is, what part gets the most gains? How does it all work? The answer to that is no one individual thing. Once you get past just a basic bowl cleanup and maybe, I say maybe, a little bit of a gasket match on the entrance, unless you're willing to reshape that entire port, don't waste your time with it. Because this was 20% of the equation once I started doing the runners. And if I didn't do this part here and reshape it, then I might as well not even have went up in here and altered the runner. So that right there is a finished look at it. Now let's look comparison wise to a port that's got it done and one that's don't. Now I'm going to try to get an equal amount of light on it. Notice how right here the edge, the green, which is the 70, then it comes up to the 60, how it's all pulled into that. Now if we go over here I'm way down here. You see where my you see where my pointer is? That's the 70. There's probably a hundred thousandths deep I had to dig deeper in the bowl from about this point to get it to pull in and lay in with this right here. So that's just an incredible amount of work. Now here, we guys, when you get a set of heads, like I told you that you know the guy really done a good job, that is a real professional ported set of heads. You, you want to get the heads home and you take a valve spring off or get the guy to do that before you leave the shop. If you don't see this, then guess what? He didn't do a damn thing to it to really pull it in to make it awesome. All you got was a bowl cleanup. Let me show you. I'm going to move the right light around a little bit so you can see. Okay. Basically, you see the gray, then you see the green. See that little patch of green right in here? See the gray, the green on this side, <clears throat> the green on this side, then the green underneath it. <clears throat> Lord of mercy, losing my voice, guys. Been up too long. See the green on this side? That's the 30. There's the 45. There's the green right there, the 60. Now look at the port work, how that is all cut up and pulls in. You have to see green, gray, green, and then the shiny of the bowl. To where it's a blend where when you run your finger right there over cross of it, you don't feel a lip or any kind of big radius. It's just going to, right from the edge of the green 70 degree angle, you're going to run your finger back, there'll be no humps or extrusions in the way. That's how you can tell if you've got a real professional port job done to the head. If you don't have that, then what the guy done, he cleaned them up, done an alright job. I guess what it would do is that little mark and them identification lines are going to set 
a ported head that somebody does without a flow bench or without a sonic checker or even with a flow bench that don't have the sonic checker, that's what sets them apart. And you remember I've told you in all my films, basically you walk into a head shop Ask them, say, what are you using to measure how thick they are so that you bust? If they do not have a sonic checker, a good one, turn around and walk out the door because that means that the yo-yo does not, he's not porting the head to the maximum limit. He's not a shape shifter. He don't know the math because there's absolutely no way you can do this without a sonic checker. You just can't do it. This is the result of it right here. This is a sonic head versus non-sonic. All right. Anyway, wanted to show you that. The green, gray, green, silver shining. Reblended. Valve job done. Opened up where the 60 degree radius blends into it to match all that awesome bow work that was done to it. Now we got a hell of a window to release it. Alright, on to the next phase, um, which uh, we'll get to it in just a minute, whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what it was, sorry. I was going to let you see me <clears throat> chew that little chunk out right there. Uh, here we go. Remember, uh, this has been done, this has been done the short turn. I'm going to go here and do the switch. You can't believe the amount of material that this thing is throwing up. Uh, I know it's hard to see it, but I'm telling you, this is a big butcher hog with the wide pieces. The chunks are a lot bigger in size than it works out. All right. Trying to see that line there sure is rough, man. Like I said, I take this and just chunk and pull to where I can't feel no humps. Then I'll have to go in there with the smaller cutter and pull it in. All right. See, back here I can see where the line is, the reflection of the light. When you position the head differently, it pulls into that line. I always make sure I get before that, not to it, till I can see it better with the light reflection. Oh, fixing to lose my light, dad, blame it, vibration.
want to take it so I can come back in there and pull the line in with the stone and do my blending. I just wanted you to see how much pressure, I mean, I just chopped probably a hundred plus thousands out in that section from there to there to meet the other side. All right. I mean, to, to stop in this second, it's kind of shook me to the ground. I'm going to lose a few minutes. But I just had the hell scared out of me, and I guess you're looking at it. What you're looking at, which knocked me to the ground, is I thought I'd done busted through the bowl, and this head was jumped. But uh, <laughs> I never seen, you know, I probably have done, and I'm not kidding you, 30 sets of these ovals put in these valves. Never had anything like that happen. I said, oh my God, I busted, but then I tried to stick this through there, and guess what? Won't go. Next thing, I took a flashlight, shined in the porch, turned all the lights out. No light came through. So basically, there's a bubble right here that when I was blending in that area, released that section, and this right here is what kills you. But I wanted to show you a little something interesting. All that meat that I took out, what I did, and I'm going to back up to show you this, is I went in there my sonic checker because this right here just proves the point. Because there's no way I could have busted through that just then. Hold on. Even though accidents happen. I, I'm just going to show you some thicknesses. Pretty interesting. Um, here we go. This is right there where the hole is. I mean, just right almost on top of it. Two hundred thirty thousandths right on top of it. I'll go right up above it, and of course it's going to be way thicker there. Almost too thick to pick up because that's where the, the, the seat area is. 270 makes perfect sense. Them numbers job. So then I said, okay, let's hit over here on the side, right beside of it. 10 about 118 120 but that's coming up on the side away from the area of the debit let's go ahead and let's come up the other side of it real quick let you see this hundred forty five Now I'm going to call that 180. That's pretty good, so see? I mean, I've whopped it really good, but I did it in a radius fashion. Now, here's usually the side where it gets thin right here where it goes next to the exhaust port. It wouldn't surprise me if it got pretty low right there. Well, you got to constantly dip this thing in the lithium. If it ain't got that pad on there, it won't pick up for nothing. All right, that's right when it's starting to come out. Hundred and seventy thousandths. So you see, there's just no way that that could have busted through. <coughs> but now you do have water, por the porosity holes, just like that little piece that you see. I wanted to show you that. I mean, it about gave me a heart attack after all this work because I was well within safety margins, but y'all, I have had this happen, and it always happens when you're just about through with your head, which I'm about an hour away. That's when this happens. It always happens at the very end when you're almost through. It can't do it near the beginning where you could, you know, stop and work on the head. And, of course, the customer's always going to go, Oh, you poured it too much. You did this. And couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is, it don't matter. I've had brand new dark cylinder heads and Brodex heads go in there and go to Portland where they had a, a porosity bubble in the casting it busted through. Now see right there, look how thick I was. Three hundred thousandths. I mean, 
that's right past the exhaust going on the back side of the boat. There is no way that I could be hitting water right there where it was at unless that hole went straight through. But I promise you, I've seen it done. I have absolutely seen it done. But I had to go back in there and uh, re-verify and make sure that it wasn't. But as you can see, going all the way around it, picking up numbers like 150 in the thinnest spot, some of them 300 thousandths. See, look at there, 330. And then when you get on the back side of the bowl, of course, now it starts to thin out. It comes up right around that area, right around 210, 220. Right on the money, right where it picked it up. You got to constantly move the sonic checker and re verify and get the numbers two or three times. But man, there's just no doubt right there. I'm losing my voice, y'all. I'm sorry about that. Two fifty. And as I come up that wall, sure enough, it starts thinning out. So she's thin, gets to about 150 right here, and then around 300, so it goes 300, 250, 230, then 200, 170, 150. That's what the bowl would look like on a Sonic map. All right, I got to change tapes, y'all. Catch you in a minute.